Now this is a better explanation how the rope worked. A lot of people think that the rope cut the stone. I don't care how it was quarried. I don't care how it was got there. All I care about was how they used the rope to fit one piece of stone to the next. Now in my theory, this rope, when it's pulled very, very taut, okay, if you notice right here, it has an inner edge that cuts against this stone. Now the adjacent stone would not be right next to it. The say, all right, let's say that this rope is an inch thick, okay, in diameter. The other stone, the heavy stone, would be placed at three quarters of a diameter, or three quarters of an inch away from the stone. So we have an inch stone going in a three quarter inch wide slot. Therefore, only this face right here on this edge would hit the adjacent stone, and this inner face right here would hit this one. Now this could be practiced dozens of times to get the stone to fit, depending on how close they got both stones cut before they placed them. And then they fine fitted them with this. They'd go down and then would go over. Now remember that, that the uh, stone had nubs on the bottom. Now let's pretend that this, 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 um, pretend that this is sand, okay? What they would do is they lift this up on the nubs, okay? They put sand underneath it, like this. Right there. Now, would that be fair to say that if you were to put five pounds of sand underneath any stone, that it the sand is matter and it would lift the stone? Yes. Well, they would do that, okay? Then what they would do is they have the adjacent stone this will eventually fit right next to each other but what they do is they take off 50 percent off of this side and 50 percent off the other side and they keep doing that until both sides are equal they go down once okay and then they start to go over here like this all the way to the side. Now, the, the first thing you'd say is, okay, um, if there was sand underneath there, if you got to the other side, you would pinch this and it wouldn't come out. That's true. That's why they use wedges. They use wood and, let's just pretend this is a little, um, either wood or a stone wedge. And, it, 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 if you notice, it is uh, cut so that you can use it for different lengths, different things. So as you're cutting over this way and you keep going and going, you put another wedge let's see about about like that and then it's not going to pinch and then you come across again. Okay? Now naturally if you do this, what this will do is leave about a 3 to 5 percent gradient on the back then what they would do is they pop the stone up again, pull these out, put in a whole bunch more sand right there and drop the stone down and do it again. And they would do it again and again and again. That is what the, sh the record shows, why there are divots in the stone, why they do it all the same way. Now you say, well, there's, what proof have you got that there are wedges? Well, we'll see.